Sure, and I love why questions, and most scientists don't. Um, you really uh, take, um, take it uh, straightforward, and you address why questions. You say they, there's, there's no purpose, there's no meaning, but there is a poetic, um, uh, you, you have a poetic naturalism. Uh, what, what is that, and why should it mean anything to me? Yeah, naturalism is an old term. It just means that there's only one world, the natural world, the world that we experience, that we test using observations and science. Poetic is meant to emphasize a certain flavor of naturalism, one that takes a judicious middle position between uh, hardcore eliminativist naturalism that says that everything is an illusion other than the fundamental wave function of the universe, or what I would call an augmented naturalism. David Chalmers thinks that he's a naturalist, but he thinks that there are mental properties in addition to physical properties. There are people who think that there are objective moral rules in addition to the physical stuff of the universe. I think all of that is not extra stuff. It should be thought of as ways of talking about the world. So poetic says there's only one world, the natural world, but there are many ways of talking about it. And if they're accurate, useful ways, we could count them as real. Is this a uh, distinction without a real difference? I think it's very, very important. I mean, certainly if you believe that morality is constructive and subjective versus objective, that has a very immediate impact on how you live your life in the world. And I think that naturalism has a very immediate impact on how you live your life in the world in terms of what your own personal purpose should be. Let's, uh, let's just get some basic definitions. Naturalism is physicalism, materialism. Right. So how, how do those three articulate? I think materialism, which is the idea that there's, there's matter, which is most of what the universe is or all of what the universe is, is a little bit outdated these days in the sense that once quantum mechanics comes along, we're not sure even what or matter better. is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. physicalism is better term. It's that whatever the physical universe is, that's all that there is. Now, naturalism says there's only one world. Physicalism says, and that world is the physical world, and that's it. So you can imagine being a naturalist, but not being a physicalist, because you might believe, for example, that there are mental properties mm -hmm. that the world has in addition to its physical instantiations. So, so a naturalist is a bigger category. Yes, that's right. It may be uh, equivalent. Uh, to physicalism Absolutely. may, may physicalism subsume, so physicalism may may uh, uh, subsume all of naturalism, or it may not. There, yeah, you can definitely be a naturalist, but be not a physicalist. But you couldn't be a physicalist without being a naturalist. I can't imagine that. That'd be weird, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Okay. All right. So now we have our, 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 our categories. And I, I've always had the, 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 the feeling, and maybe this is uh, simplistic, that uh, if you're going to be a naturalist or a physicalist, that you are fooling yourself in trying to imbue purpose or meaning. Or uh, Certainly, we want to live our lives and enjoy ourselves in our own way but we're really, it's just, it's just a, 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 we're just fooling ourselves in the process. And, uh, you know, in Steven Weinberg classic remark, the more we understand the universe, the more it looks pointless that, that uh, you know, that's the reality. And if you're trying to make some substitute for religion, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a waste of time. Yeah, I think it, uh, that's a very natural thing to believe given the history of these intellectual concepts that they've been handed down to us. We used to identify purpose with what we might now call transcendent purpose. A naturalist will deny the existence of transcendent purposes, usually, like most nat I would anyway. So you think the universe is, it is marching along according to the laws of physics. It has no purpose in mind. It's just doing its thing. It was not put there for any reason. So there's no transcendent purpose in that sense. But there are obviously purposes in the universe. People have purposes, tools have purposes, features of the world obviously mm -hmm. have purposes. So the question is, can I adapt this notion of a purpose, which is obviously very useful in the world, and say that I have a purpose to my life? And a poetic naturalist says that if that concept of having a purpose in your life, having meaningfulness to it, uh, is fulfills the purposes that you have, the uses you have for it, the 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 reasons why you are doing it, then that's an absolutely legitimate way of thinking about who you are. In a sense, though, you're using the term in two different ways. Uh, you're saying there is no purpose, capital P, capital M, meaning in the universe, and that's the final answer to the question. And then you're asking a totally different question. Now that we find ourselves in this position, you know, how do we just not be miserable? Uh, in our lives. Well, you know, yeah, we might be miserable sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Bad things happen yeah. when we get sad. But how do we, I think that it's, 
I think that it is it's not really. But I, I agree. There's two different concepts. But I would I would argue that my definitions of purpose and meaning are the kind of relevant ones. Like when we ask, what meaning do I give to it, to oh, something okay. that happens in the world? It is the meaning I give to it okay. that really matters. But 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 they are really two totally separate Absolutely. questions. Sure. And 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 you are using in a sense the English words that are similar because they describe both to uh, to, to, to somehow lead from one to the other. But well, I, I think it's it's you know it's very much like free will, right? Where people have more well, than one another idea big in mind. <laughs> right. So there's some idea of free will that I can violate the laws of physics by thinking about it. And a, a physicalist poetic naturalist says, no, you can't. But there's another idea of free will that when I get up in the morning and decide what shirt to wear, I can make that decision given the information I have. And a poetic naturalist says, sure, you can definitely do that. So in that sense, you have free will. Likewise, in, in the sense that I very often operationally use the terms, the purpose of my life, the meaning of things that happen, a poetic naturalist is very happy to say that those happen. But, but you're right, drawing the distinction between that and a capital P transcendent purpose or a capital M uh, important ineffable meaning is an important one to draw.